there's an interesting connection between um, line integrals and area integrals. Remember, when we talked about line integrals, we talked about a case where we had a curve that was inside of a vector space. So all these little arrows are representing um, my vector field. So I've got a vector field. If it's a vector field in the plane, that vector field has two components, which we could call m and n. Um, we have some curve c here. We're going around, the, we're going around that curve. What, we're, what we did was we went around the curve and we measured f dotted with the tangent to the curve times ds. Now f dot t, if you have a particular point on the curve, here's the vector f and the unit tangent is pointing this way. So if you take f dot t, you're really measuring the component of the vector field f in the direction of t. So it's, it's related to the projection, but it's just the length of the projection of f onto t. So we're just seeing, you can think, how aligned is the vector field to the direction of motion? We're multiplying that times the length of the curve in that particular area and summing those up all on the curve. So we're really measuring how, how aligned is, if this is a, a, a fluid flowing, how, li how aligned is the flow to the curve, or how does the, f how does this, uh, how does that fluid tend to flow along the curve? Or since it's a closed curve, how does it tend to circulate along the curve? Hence the name circulation. Now, um, since your vector field has components m and n, what we another way of writing this idea, oh, and I should say, when we have a closed curve, we usually put a little closed circle on there to indicate that. We can put a little arrow on here to indicate the direction. Um, in this case, I have my unit tangents going that way, so we were going counterclockwise around the curve. This little arrow indicates we have a closed curve and we're going counterclockwise to find the circulation. Of course, if you go the other way, then all of the unit tangents will just have the opposite sign and so you'll just get the opposite answer in terms of just just flip the sign, the S-I-G-N on that. Okay, now in order to do a line integral, remember we got a parameterization and we integrated from starting time to ending time and our vector field had components M and N and our unit tangent would be x prime, y prime, right, divided by the speed, which is the length of the velocity, so we made a unit vector. But then ds was also um, the speed times dt. So we do the integral actually in terms of the parameter here. But you can notice that you have that when you distribute this v, you really have this, and so the result of the dot product is m times x prime dt and x prime dt we could call dx, so this is m dx plus n dy. So this is an, just another way of writing a circulation integral. The cool thing, the thing that Green's theorem tells us is that there's a relationship between that circulation and the integral over the region inside that closed curve. So Green's theorem says the circulation integral, however you want to write it, actually can be thought of as a double integral over the interior of the region. What you need to integrate over the interior is dn dx minus dm dy times the area. Okay, this is the circulation form of Green's theorem. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's really just based on two ideas. So I want to talk about those two ideas so you can remember what the formula is at all times. Okay, the first idea is if you look at a tiny box, let's just make it a tiny box that is delta x wide and delta y tall, then if you just find the circulation around this tiny box, so you go around this tiny box finding the alignment of the unit tangent to, um, to the, the vector field, so f dot t ds, you go around doing that, you find that the circulation around a tiny box is approximately equal to dn dx minus dm dy in that box times the area of the box, so times dx dy in this, well, delta x delta y, I guess, in this case, since we had a finite change. Okay, so the circulation around a tiny box is basically this number times the area of the box. So since you get the circulation by multiplying this number times the area, this must be the circulation per unit area. Sometimes we call that the circulation density. It's a measure of the circulation around a tiny box, or the circulation per unit area around a tiny box there. So we have the circulation density, 
circulation per unit area times the area that would give the circulation, right? Okay, that's the first idea, is that the circulation around a tiny box in a vector field is really this, this quantity times the area of the box. Now, it's not hard to prove, but it takes a little while to do it. So, um, so we'll just kind of skip it. But the next thing is that if you have, if you take the circulation around the circulation of two adjoining boxes, so you take the circulation around this box plus the circulation around that box, then the circulation in the middle, if you look at it in one way, in, on the box on the left, you're going up, so you're measuring the circulation, the flow along this part. On the other one, you're measuring the flow in the, in the opposite direction along the same part. So all that's different in these two integrals is that you have the, you have the sine of the unit tangent. So the flow along, if you take the circulation around here and the circulation around here, the flow along that shared boundary gets canceled, and so you just end up with the circulation around the entire region. If you add in the circulation around an adjoining box here, then on those shared boundaries it cancels and you just get the circulation around the resulting box. And that's the second idea. So you take the circulation around one box plus the circulation around another box. Circulation around box one, say plus the circulation around box two, all that's left is the circulation around, around the entire boundary. Okay, so two, two ideas here in Green's form. The first is you have the circulation around tiny box is roughly this number times the area of the box. And if you add up the circulation around two adjoining box, you just get a circulation around the combined region. Okay, so if we have some curve here, then we could break up the interior into a bunch of tiny boxes. And then we could add up, I'm just busily partitioning this into a bunch of little sub-rectangles here. Okay, and then we could add up the circulation around this one, the circulation around this, and this, and this, so we could just find the combined circulation. Now, this is only approximately true, but the approximation gets better and better as you slice finer and finer. So what we're going to do is we're going to make really super, super tiny boxes here. You can see if you sum up all the circulations of all these boxes, all that's going to be left is the circulation around the common boundary because of our second idea. So to find the circulation around, around this box, so f dot t ds, it's a closed curve and we're going counterclockwise. I should say this is, this is the counterclockwise circulation. If this, so if you want to find the, the counterclockwise circulation around this entire boundary is just to sum up throughout the entire region the circulation around all the tiny boxes in the region. Now we're talking about infinitesimally tiny boxes, so now I'll use dx and dy. Or I could just say that's infinitesimal bit of area, dA. There's Green's theorem. So the two ideas, the counterclockwise circulation around a tiny box is this number times the area of the box. So the second idea is when you add up circulation around adjoining boxes, you just get circulation around the common boundary or the, the total boundary. So if you go throughout the entire region, adding up the circulation around the tiny boxes, all you get is the circulation around the final common boundary. Cool. So that's the circulation form of Green's theorem. So there's a circulation integral. This is just another way of writing a circulation integral, and we need to put a little Area. If you want to do the counterclockwise circulation, it's just this. Now you may re may recognize this dn dx minus dm dy. Um, remember when we were talking about a three-dimensional vector field, if we had m, n, and then a third component, p, then if it's a vector field, each of these depends on three inputs, right, if it's a three-dimensional vector field. And the curl of f, or we, we abbreviated it as del cross f, where this was that vector of operators ddx, was the determinant of this matrix, the matrix that had i, j, and k, 
partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. Those are the three operators in this del operator, right? And then you just put in m, n, and p. So if, you're, if you just had a two-dimensional vector field, then there wouldn't be a p component. You could just put a 0 there. And these wouldn't depend on n. And so what you'd get when you found the curl would be i times 0 minus n can't depend on z. So that's 0. So you get 0 there. And j times the derivative with respect to z of m, which has got to be 0, minus the derivative with respect to x of 0. So that's 0. And then the k component is um, the partial of n with respect to x, right? So dn dx minus the partial of m with respect to y, dm dy. Ah, so this quantity right here could just be written as the k component, or we could say del cross f dot k over the interior of the region. Let's look at an example of how Green's theorem might be useful to us. Let's say we want to find the counterclockwise circulation. There's this vector field around some particular triangle. Let's sketch the triangle to start off with. One boundary is y equals 0, that's the x-axis. One boundary is x equals 1, that's this vertical line here. And the other boundary is the line y equals x. Let's see, those two would, would cross at the point 1, 1, right? And here at 0, 0, and then here's the point um, over 1, up none. OK, so we want to find the circulation counterclockwise around the boundary of this particular vector field. So to do the integral directly, to directly compute the counterclockwise circulation, so f dot t ds, we would need to parameterize each of these three curves and then do find flow along this curve, flow along this curve, flow along this curve. Here's where Green's theorem can save us some time. All we have to do is do the integral around the region. And it's easy to set that up the bounds on this region. x is going from 0 to 1. And y, for each x value, y is climbing from 0 up until it hits this curve, which is the curve y equals x. So y, uh, y is going from 0 to x. And m is x plus y, and n, looking here, is negative x squared minus y squared. So dn dx is negative 2x, and um, dm dy is negative, uh, let's see, oh, dm dy is 1. So we do dn dx minus dm dy would be negative 2x minus 1 dy dx. So I don't have to find any parameterizations. I can just do this area integral. In this case, the area integral is not too bad. Um, I have negative 2x minus 1. And the antiderivative of uh, 1 with respect to y is just y. Evaluate between x and 0 just throws an extra x in here. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 2x squared um, minus x dx. And the antiderivative here is negative 2 thirds x cubed minus 1 half x squared. And we just evaluate between 0 and 1. When you plug in 0, of course, you don't get anything. When you plug in 1, we get negative 2 thirds minus 1 half. So let's see. That's negative 4 6 minus 3 6. Should be negative 7 6. And there's our circulation integral without actually ever having to do a line integral. All we did was an area integral of this pretty simple function.